Omadap Maharaj, my brother, thank you so much for taking the time for being here this morning. Thanks for the opportunity and the invitation once again, Mr. Bishop. It uh, is always good to have you. The audience of Trinidad and Tobago this morning. This um, morning you were sending me some good news, some good vibes. Go ahead, tell our listeners yeah, yeah, yeah. what well, you was down something put on by the tourism folks, huh? Right, right. We have our first cruise ship, I understand, coming in for the season in Trinidad. And more than that, I think there maybe have been some route changes given the unfortunate disasters. Uh, that we experienced mm. in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. notwithstanding the increased traffic, there was a lot of buzz on the port of Spain this morning. And happy to be there to, of course, help showcase all that is good in Trinidad and Tobago. Yes. As you are doing on your show every Sunday, man. No, thank you very much, man. But I tell you, you started my Sunday the right way. <laughs> I smiled because the, 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 the line that caught my attention, he said, I am proud to be part of something that showcases a good part of Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, Omadav Maharaj, you are an agricultural economist. The government has in its budget identified its agricultural priorities for 2018. How do you see the stated commitment by the government through this year? But budget allocations? Well, we are quite a way ahead. The budget was read, I think, on October the 2nd. Uh, we are quite some time ahead, having come through the debates in the lower house. And I think this week we'll, of course, move to the Senate, mm -hmm. where ultimately we would like to have this fiscal year budget approved. And of course, throughout the length and breadth of Toronto Tobago, there has been significant discussion, some would say even autopsies mm -hmm. of the budget. Yeah. But I think the awareness is there. The conversation must continue as to where we go from here as a collective mm -hmm. society. Yeah. The, the fact is, if we focus quickly on agriculture, mm -hmm. my view, given, I think I have mm -hmm. used this punchline, I think, since 2014, because if you look at the general economic circumstances facing the country, the man on the street is the best indicator. Yes. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And that person in society would feel it, the, the mm -hmm. single parents, the minimum wage earners, and so on. And of course, whereas agriculture is concerned, the lower income people spend the greater part of their budget and more of their time wondering what to eat, how best to eat, and of course to provide for families by extension. So mm -hmm. that my view is, of course, we need to preserve and protect food and nutrition security at the household level. That's where it all begins, number one. Two is you need to protect and strengthen the men and women who feed us. Those are the practicing farmers. Yes, we want to encourage people to come on board. Mm -hmm. We want all of that. Mm -hmm. But the people who are actually have sunk their hands in the soil, cast their nets on the sea and so on, we need to see what we have to do to keep them in check. And of course, we need to build consensus on the way forward. And I see the Honourable Prime Minister uh, came into the conversation at his Pigot Corner yes. budget talks. And he, uh, quite a few times, he hovered on agriculture um, throughout that. I captured it in our online um, clipping that we did. And of course, the Minister of Finance, in his presentation, he kept circling around agriculture. But Passing around the wound is not the, not, not, not the fact, you know. Yes, I respect their view that it's coming home. Mm. It's coming home. But the fact is, now we need to act. And we need to act aggressively and urgently because the man down there, the lowest man, when it is you cannot provide for your family, especially children, we run a lot of serious social risks in this country. Mm -hmm. One of the things that you identified early, uh, Omadav Maharaj, my guest here, is that question of reaching out to the farmers and making sure that they have a, a, a some sustained lifestyle coming out of that, some revenue that makes sense. And when you look at the reforestation emphasis that has been identified by the Minister of Agriculture for the long-term yield of the farmer, for the long-term sustainability and survival of the farmer, this must be encouraging. Reforestation, I think. The, the, yeah, the, 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 the reforestation uh, em emphasis um, that he has placed on, uh, this year. He was here but, with us uh, last mm -hmm. week, I believe it was. The reforestation program area. really entails the planting of different types of trees and so on in forested mm -hmm. areas. Mm -hmm. Of course, I think the Honorable Prime Minister used the reference sometime in the past that the the types of trees that they select to go, there mm -hmm. would not, of course, be only timber, but you have fruit trees, food trees, mm -hmm. food crop trees, breadfruit trees, and so on inside it. That mix will, of course, provide... Uh, better nutrition and feed for wild animals, the fauna and so on. Mm -hmm. um, of course, that, that's very valid and of course needed. It will provide food sources in the longer term and for timber. I think part of his campaign promise was the plywood factory in South Trinidad and all of that. So, and of course, it will create employment. That, that employs a significant number. I can't remember the number of workers right now, but I think the minister mentioned it at your show. But the allocation, if you look at the collective allocation in the budget, that has been the, the bugbear for mm -hmm. years, right? So the value right now to me, I'm very not, I'm not peeved by it in the sense that people get worked up, how much money, how much money. But the fact is, agriculture has always been doing more with less. Mm -hmm. Agriculture, mm -hmm. in my view, has mm -hmm. not been high on the burner. I mean, there was a, a nice newspaper caption that captured many start of this year that says, we need to put agriculture on the front burner. And if you do that, 
you could see this thing through the two lens that mm. I always look at the allocation. And that is to say, agriculture is not high on the national development agenda. And of course, that would suggest why the allocation is what it is on a cash basis. Mm. But, but if it is we can propose the right initiatives and understand the urgency of development and the interventions needed across the board, and we propose to the Ministry of Finance, Minister of Finance, and the, the appropriate routes, the things that we need to strengthen and protect food and nutrition security in Trinidad and Tobago, then of course that allocation could be altered. But if we continue doing the same things, we we dig ponds, we patch road, we do the basic things, mm -hmm. and we scrape the surface and not understand the urgency of the situation, then that's where we are. You you you, you put heavy emphasis, and you've said it twice this morning. So let me ask you to delineate in that area the question of pre preserving food and nutrition security at the household level. Explain. When you look at, if I could use some numbers, just to lighten the conversation, the average household, right? Let's just say that's four four persons, and even better if you look at a single parent home where that mother or father, um, of course, is the breadwinner for three. Um, dependence, right? You go, I mean, I, I eat basic local food, some sikia figure and so on, but of course the people like yourselves might enjoy nice restaurant meals and so on. So the average, the, the fact is a meal could range from a few dollars in this country, double certain at five dollars, up to a few hundred dollars of a restaurant meal. So let's just throw out the average meal, twenty-five dollars. Mm -hmm. For that four people in that, in that home, four persons, that's a hundred dollars per meal. Now, if you spread that across the week, at least one meal per day, mm -hmm. 700, and for four weeks in a month, that's $2,800. Now, if it is I could take one meal out of my family's budget, meaning that I could grow something at home, I could have my small kitchen garden, and we go back to that, mm -hmm. the Prime Minister talk about messing up your hands, and that's very powerful words to me in the sense that if you could take $2,800 out of the, um, the supermarket chains and so on, and keep that value there. That twenty eight hundred dollars could reposition mm -hmm. the welfare of your own children and your own lifestyle. Of course, you could afford different educational tools. You might send them to a little training camp, mm -hmm. learn a life skill, and so on. So that's why I respect, of course, the previous speaker on your show, um, Dr. Wallace. So all of these things, there's a agriculture is linked, of course, across the board. Uh, it's not that I have an obsession with the sector, but of course, once your eye open every day, God willing. You must eat. Mm -hmm. So this mm -hmm. thing connects in a lot of ways, whether it be social, poverty alleviation, environmental, economic growth. Agriculture has a role to play. I got you. Agricultural economist and consultant <laughs> Omar Dev Maharaj is my guest. In addition to agri the agriculture sector policy and targets, you said greater emphasis must be placed on actions that citizens can take for themselves at home and in public spaces, which brings the greatest return within our environment, both economic and ecological. Give some areas of self-help self our listeners can approach uh, as, as a starting point. Well, of course, the first thing is the home garden. There's a lot of people have a lot of, what do you call it, like a phobia for doing something because they already neighbor see or whatever. I think we have to move past that, of course. I mean, my example was when we had the national cleanup campaign, I actually picked up about 30 tires that were, of course, mm. illegally mm. dumped in central Trinidad um, in the Carlson Field area. I took it home, carved them out like flower pots. I got some manures from, manure from the Akalu family, that's the local island grain mm -hmm. rice farmers. Um, I, I put together the flower pots and so on, but the faces of the tires that I carved, the circle wheels, I created a lattice on my front wall and I have the vine, the stuff that vine. So I had some um, passion fruit and body on mm. that. And the tire pots as usual, the tomatoes, all the seasonings, the peppers, I don't, I don't buy any of these things. And of course, I only live on one lot, which is, you know, the average size of a whole. I could move into the lot next to you if you would allow of me. Of course, I mean, <laughs> and on the perimeter, on the, on the perimeter, I, I put down some plantains and the sikia fig. We eat a lot of local fruits and so on. Mm -hmm. And that is very comfortable because I look at the onions, but of course, you need to demonstrate. You can only keep telling people what to do. I think society has a general uh, resistance to that. Yeah, You can't tell somebody eat local. Right now, if you use that punchline, yes, I use it every day, mm -hmm. but I could tell you, for some people, that is a turn off. Yeah? Mm. The fact is, of course, the you cannot tell, like children in the school program and so on, in the school system, when you provide the meals and honey, tell them, children, you need to eat local. That's a sort of punishment. We're going to look out in wider society and they see the presidential wine and all these fancy things and, you know, the lifestyles that people portray generally, right? 
that really sends the wrong signal. Mm. I think, of course, the ones higher up needs to understand the urgency of the situation. But So when we're having, uh, let me see if I understand you clearly here. You can no longer uh, keep telling people this because a lot of folks become tone deaf or it's a turn off, as you say. But when we're having state functions, it would be good to see some local things on the table. It sends a bigger message on whatever you say. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. So when we had mm -hmm. the spotlight on the economy of Toronto, and Tobago, mm -hmm. and we lamented the state of agriculture and the role it can play. I don't know if any farmers was invited. I was not invited to the mm -hmm. forum. But by extension... If I ask, what was the meals that were mm. served in that? Because the other match status, of course, I showed you at the household level. Now, if it is we have 1.3 million people in this country, right? Let's work the numbers so it'll be easy. So we have three meals a day, 3.9 million meals. Let's say 4 million meals per day in this country, mm -hmm. right? And you... That's 4 million meals per day, sorry. You multiply the match across to... <coughs> 365 days per year, that works up to about $36.5 billion, starting at $25 per meal. Yeah? Now, when you look at the size of the food and beverage industry and you ask yourself behind that, what percentage of that is local? What percentage of that is imported? Mm -hmm. It shows you a certain point. So when we wonder about the budget, my view this year is, of course, my personal view is, yes, we know the challenges. Yes, we could identify the opportunities. The Honorable Minister was here to discuss those with you. But I think we need to go one step further in that punchline to say challenges, opportunities, and change mm -hmm. in keeping with the Minister of Finance mm -hmm. direction because he sits on a seat that I am not aware of. He's privy to information that I do not have. Mm -hmm. And of course, in respecting that view, if we use a simple market-based approach, we import about $56 million in FCOJ. That is fresh concentrated orange juice per year. Over $30 million in the leg quarters. Mm -hmm. yeah? And all these other things. So if it is we could identify strategic um, commodities or crops because we do import primary commodities that we can grow and produce here in lo locally in Trinidad and Tobago, then the budget should be focusing on developing those subsectors. So that is a market-based approach because the fact is you cannot chase, given our economic circumstances, we cannot chase after the whole sector just at once. Everything wouldn't happen. We wouldn't reverse a trend as decades in the, in the making mm -hmm. in, in one go. But I think that if we talk about budgetary allocations and so on, you need to start doing a programmatic intervention. Otherwise, we continue running around the issues. The imports will not stop because, of course, the availability to the import distribution channels and so on of foreign exchange to buy and distribute throughout Trinidad, the wider region and so on, all of those things are functional. But the fact is if we want to build capacity in a local environment, we need to start stratifying the food sector stratifying the, the production basis and how it is that comes to market. <clears throat> so that whole value chain there is not only about a production issue, it's also about a value chain issue because mm. <clears throat> farmers will tell you finding the right market mm. to fetch the right prices and so on are often their challenges as well. So the whole food system in this country needs uh, co special consideration. I think, of course, we do have the main actors. We have a Ministry of Agriculture, the NAMDEVCO, that deals with agricultural marketing. You have the financing side of the ADB and so on. But mm -hmm. unless people understand their roles and come together and mapping this thing forward. But it's that yeah. Benko, um, they, they just where you, these markets are open uh, in different places, giving outlets for farmers. That has proven to be really, really a good thing. And I, I think expanding that yeah. will do, as you said, without telling people buy local, you just make it available to them by us having a lot more of these markets is going to be one way of, of uh, encouraging or soliciting or attracting the, 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 the lifestyle, the, the tasting lifestyle, the eating lifestyle. Very good point. And of course, yes, I do support the Namdefco's farmers market. A lot of entrepreneurship efforts with artisans and so on. I'm present at a lot of them. A lot of people invite me, of course, to lend support. I mean, social media is a big thing. We all participate, get the message out and so on. But when we speak to the food import bill, mm -hmm. all right, mm -hmm. of course, as the minister rightfully says on different occasions, I've heard him say is that there are things we must continue to import, which is obvious. The wheat-based products, some of the soy-based, whatever it is, right? Yes. But we also have to be mindful in that $6.5, $7.5 billion food import bill that we, we moan about all the while, Hmm. Built into that is concentrates and intermediary foods. So we'd be bringing in the concentrated orange juice, for example. Hmm. But I don't drink that. You wouldn't drink it. It goes into processing. Mm -hmm. There is mm -hmm. a local manufacturer that uses this. All right? Um, the pepper mash, the tomato paste, the pastries, all these other things. So we continue to import those. But the fact is, when they come here, we add value. Meaning that we create downstream employment. We have all these industrial estates that create tons of employment and mm -hmm. income generation. So... 
it's not a bad thing that we import it because, of mm. course, the livelihoods are created down the line. What we should be concerned about is, of course, the continued importation of commodities. That's primary agricultural commodities. If we import in tomatoes, lettuce, and the basics, poultry, and so on. The fact is, that is what we should be concerned about, number one. Mm. And number two is, of course, the quality of the foods that we import because we talk about antibiotics and poultry production, the hormones. Mm. We talk mm. about everybody laments. We talk about the, the, the chicken, the quality of the leg and thighs when you go to these fast food places to pick up lunch. And you, you, know I mean? you look at it, you turn off, but the fact is you just spent $45 on mm-hmm. lunch and so on. Mm-hmm. So if it is we could identify by, I mean, a simple study and so on could tell you the things that you can produce in the country. We have perfect soils in this country, good weather conditions. Mm. Facility. We have a lot. I mean, countries develop. We have water access, electricity in most parts, and so on. Of course, in rural areas, we need to continue the focus. But the point is, there is opportunity. So unless we start to segment the discussion that way and focus on mm. what is the role of the state in driving the development of sheep and goat sector, for example, to get more of that meat mm. into production, because, of course, we import very significant volumes per year. And, of course, besides volume, we look at value, because as... as the Minister of Finance rightfully says a continued outflow of funds from the country. Mm-hmm. So, it, but we again we come back to this point that in a recession we are trying to do things which are best done during the boom. Are you comfortable as an agricultural economist with the uh, in, 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 in a, on a scale let's say zero to ten? Are you comfortable with the direction charted uh, understanding of some of the things that you articulated this morning that in fact the the the, the, the government gets it. Um, I'm not convinced. In some of the things, I hear the minister, and but when you look for the action, the implementation, we follow. Because, for example, I mean, he wouldn't spend a lot of time running around the country with me, of course, but he would spend it with um, the Trying to Be a Unified Farmers Group, I think that's Shiraz Khan's group. I mean, you see the photos, he's there with them, whatever. And then after the budget is read, Shiraz Khan is out front saying nothing the group proposed made it for consideration, and there's this whole fallout and so on. I mean, personalities aside, you wonder where the information attraction is coming from. I mean, it's not to say that this government or the previous one is a lover of my thoughts and information. I am just here to advocate my role because I make the point clearly that I'm not in it for the friends. The fact is, the taxpayers of this country has invested in me, just like yourself, from preschool to PhD. And I think I have a debt to pay to society, and this is my role and function, to provide that information Mm -hmm. so that my worldview is not to be critical of them. I think it's, of course, trying to lend an eye. I mean, <coughs> we are all human. And the fact is to move forward. That, that well, My message, of course, I should tell you tomorrow is World Food Day. Mm-hmm. And I think we should urge Trinidad and Tobago right now to remember that for decades, <coughs> we have fed off the fat and flesh of this land. Yeah, We have done that for decades, but we have not invested and we have not respected the fruits of the land. Meaning that the fruits mm-hmm. of the land is not only the foods, the people involved, we have not respected each other in this country. We have not gone that way, number one. And two is, we have not invested in the seeds of our future, which is the way forward. So that the only thing that moves this forward is the right policy and the right people. Yeah? Because all of us has to make the change. So unless policy and people come together in the same common space, for years we've been calling for a national conversation on agriculture and fisheries. Mm-hmm. And it's not just for mm-hmm. people to come and say, oh, we need road, we need pond, we need whatever. It's not just about the problems. We need to identify the opportunities, the role of the state, the role of the farmer, the role of us as the consumers. Because, mm-hmm. uh, again, as the, rice, the Prime Minister rightfully says, what is the point in you, Farmer X, growing rice? The, the Akalu family, for example, they're growing rice. But when you go to the supermarket, you want to eat basmati and whatever, whatever. Mm-hmm. The fact is people need to understand the value of the local foods, the blood, sweat, and tears that is agriculture in this country and agree that this is the direction we're going. I very much wanted to get your perspective this morning. I'm happy that you have shared it with us. A website where folks could go up, or Facebook is where folks can go up and get more information on your views and so on? Yeah, of course. I have. A, I maintain a Facebook page, Omarat Maraj, Agricultural Economist. We could interact there. And there are stakeholder mm-hmm. groups as well, the Table and Pineapple Farmers Association, Felicity Charlieville F- Fishing Association. They all maintain an online presence. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And of course, at uh, this juncture where we close mm-hmm. off, I just want to wish Trent Tobago a happy Diwali. Uh, for certain uh, portions of society, of mm-hmm. course, it's a time of respect and introspection on the way they go forward. But the collective um, country as a whole, I think we need to respect the divinity in each and every one of us. And tomorrow, mm-hmm. especially, as I said, for World Food Day, let us more, be more mindful. Look, I just gave you the numbers. If 4.4 4 million of us, um, sorry, one, 
1.3 1. 1. million of us, sorry, eat three meals a day. That's 4 million meals uh, per day. And you put the $25 value. That's $100 million in meals will be consumed in this country tomorrow. Yep. So if, of course, we could give that value back to our farmers, back to our fishermen, and eat something locally produced that's made in TNT, I think we'd be a far better off society. I see your lectures, and I see your page, and I know what you're doing, and I urge folks to go up there and, and follow you there equally. Omadav Maharaj, thank you so much for coming in this morning, making two um, points that I think uh, are points that we can leave them with. And the last one I really like is the one where he said, the com- country, I'm paraphrasing, the country opened their bank account for you when you've been withdrawing but not putting back in. It's time you start putting back in. I hear what you say, my brother. Thank you so much. You have yourself a wonderful day, and thank you for coming. Or oh, as you said at one of your lectures, which I smiled at. Have yourself a fruitful, a fruitful, fruitful. day. <laughs> a fruitful day. Have yourself a good one, man. Thank you so much.